This is very dirty oil. Donald Trump's claim that it was going to create thousands and thousands of jobs, that number has shrunk by almost 95%. That was Tom Steyer, a hedge fund billionaire from San Francisco. He's spending $100 million to attack Canada's oil sands in the Keystone XL pipeline proposal. He is Saudi Arabia's best ally. Well, Steyer's investment in Democratic politicians paid off. Last week, Obama announced yet another delay in deciding on that project. Well, what does that mean for our country's most important industry? Well, joining us with more on this is Greg Rickford. Canada's new Minister of Natural Resources. Hey, welcome to the show. Nice it's to meet you. Here. I yeah. mean, you, you've been a uh, parliamentary secretary on a whole bunch of different yeah. files. You're an MP from Kenora, but I don't think folks who follow oil and gas maybe know you. Let's introduce you to our viewers, but tell me a bit more about yourself. Yeah, I was elected in 2008, obviously in the great Kenora riding, one of the largest ridings uh, in the country and uh, ostensibly a, a picture-perfect place for natural resources, uh, forestry and mining. Uh, principally, obviously, uh, had an opportunity to live and work as a, as a nurse uh, for a number of years in many of the remote First Nations communities there and in other, other parts of Canada. Uh, but got elected in 2008 and have had an incredible opportunity and great support that I very much appreciate from our constituents uh, out there, not just in the Great Kenora reading, uh, Riding, but across uh, northwestern Ontario. You've been minister for only five weeks, so I, there's a lot of things to catch up yeah, on. I is. understand you've already been out to Calgary. Fort McMurray, that is, in so many ways, the yeah. economic engine of this country. I think our economy is in jeopardy, though, with the delay of the Keystone proposal. Can I show you some new statistics? This is polling data sure. from, from the states. I want to show you a new poll shows yeah. that in the, in the United States, support for the Keystone pipeline is growing. Yeah. It's growing, and yet Obama keeps putting this on hold. What's your instinct on this file? Yeah, well, I'm, obviously we're very disappointed uh, in, uh, in the recent decision uh, uh, for status quo, effectively, uh, by President Obama, with all due respect to him uh, and the office. Uh, we know that there's a, a critical mass of support on both sides of the border, obviously, for this development. Look, Ezra, we already ship hundreds of millions of uh, barrels of oil to the United States on more than 80 pipeline systems. Uh, uh, with virtually no um, incident whatsoever. Uh, this is uh, the safest form of uh, transportation of energy products. And uh, we want to build on that success. We're already committed through regulatory frameworks and investments in innovation and technology. I spoke at uh, the, the Canadian Energy Pipeline Association uh, forum this morning. There's a palpable enthusiasm, but there's no question about it. Canada is taking this opportunity not just to continue to you know, uh, look at our, our, our opportunities that, that, that are in the United States, but perhaps look at market diversification uh, to in other directions. Yeah, it, it's uh, crazy that decision. America would choose, and every day they say no to Keystone. Yeah. They're saying yes to Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, all yeah. these, other, and that's the thing, it's not Keystone yeah. oil or nothing, it's Keystone oil or OPEC conflict, oh, that yeah. drives me crazy. Well, there's, so, there's so much support for this, and I saw your clip with uh, Mr. Steyer, look, he's, a, he, he's entitled to his own opinion, but not his own facts. Yeah. Um, the State Department itself has said that this is an environmentally responsible, sound way to transport energy products. Uh, I know from watching the media scan and just, to, you know, being in the United States recently that there, there's a lot of support for this, not just along the pipeline, Ezra, but throughout the supply chain. Yeah. Companies that are situated in places like South Carolina that make the big tires for the trucks that are in the oil sands. Oh, yeah. They all understand the economic opportunity and that this is an environmentally sound uh, way to go. So we're hopeful that a decision uh, will come uh, sooner rather than later, but I think this does ask us to take a look at uh, other possibilities and other markets where the demand for a variety of reasons, including the newest and emerging uh, issue, which I think is energy security. And that's in play even here in North America, something we have to consider. I want to ask you about the young Dauphin, I call him the shiny pony, Justin Trudeau. He went to Calgary. He yeah. gave a speech at the Petroleum Club in Calgary last right. October. Yeah. I want to show you a brief clip from an interview we did with him right after that speech. He proposes, he won't call it a carbon tax, yeah. he calls it putting a price on yeah. carbon. Take a look at this. I'd like your thoughts on yeah. this. Everyone agrees we need to price carbon and industry is saying, well, just tell us what that price is going to be and we can build our business models around that. He calls it pricing yeah. carbon. Now, he's smart enough not to use the phrase carbon tax like Stefan Dion did. Yeah. What do you think of that? I think that's been an underreported statement by him. Yeah. What do you think? It's a tax Trojan horse, for lack of a better word. 
Uh, we've seen this from uh, previous versions of both the Liberals and the official opposition as it stands right now. Uh, it's a carbon tax, uh, straight up, and it affects the, uh, the end user uh, primarily, and, uh, and that, that's the Canadian taxpayer. Uh, at the till, uh, under a number of different circumstances. We don't support that. We've found ways, uh, obviously, to make investments in technology and innovation in energy uh, that we're reaping the results from uh, right now and will be uh, moving forward. Uh, we think the emphasis should be on diversifying our energy products and accessing new markets and obviously continuing to build on the strength of existing relationships uh, and not taxing Canadians. The fact of the matter is, is that the oil sands uh, and pipeline transmission, Ezra, is a safe way to do uh, business. It develops, it, we, we generate more revenue from it and avoid those taxes. Uh, and you know what? Um, this, uh, th this, is a, this is a more responsible way to go. That's what we've heard from Canadians, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Listen, you got a tough job. you got big shoes to fill, too. I love that jo Joe Oliver. He's I mean, a great he was guy. a great advocate. Yeah. You're in against some tough opponents. That Tom Steyer, he's got media, he's got dough. Yeah. I hope you're up for it. Sounds like you are. Good I'm luck ready. to you. Thanks yeah. for being on the show. Thank you.